An excerpt from the Regulus Financial Astrology Forecast webinar by William Stick Evers. So the eclipse is highlighting global debt sustainability issues. So what we're seeing here is high debt levels with both government and corporate debt levels are at record highs globally, making the financial system highly vulnerable to rising interest rates. High debt reduces flexibility to respond to economic downturns. Over-reliance on central banks, where markets have become dependent on central banks like the Fed to suppress interest rates through quantitative easing. This has allowed debt levels to balloon, reducing QE risk turmoil. But over-reliance on central banks to the point where uh, zombie corporations can still function and be listed on the S&P, even though they're financially insolvent. The other factor that the eclipse is bringing out here, putting the spotlight on, is dollar dominance. The U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency, so a loss of confidence in the U.S. debt or the dollar reverberates worldwide. Treasuries are the global risk-free benchmark, particularly the 10-year treasury note against which all credit is priced. So when people say all credit, all money, the value of everything is based on gold, that is not correct. That is not correct. That used to be, and you will hear gold bugs tell you that today, but but in terms of markets, in terms of sovereign wealth funds, in terms of nation states, in terms of you know too big to fail financial institutions that always get bailed out regardless, it's all based on the 10-year treasury. And so we're also um, seeing the fact that lack of inflation hedges is a major eclipse is highlighting where investors are lulled into complacency by years of low inflation. This has been going on where we've had extend and pretend policies since 2009 onward, where portfolios are, are highly exposed to inflation and rising rates due to low allocations to real estate, like commodities, tips, et cetera. So what's happening is the everything that, uh, you know, you look at the, you look at these, uh, you know, 60 40 bond, you know, 60 40 portfolios, which are basically the cookie cutter standard portfolio. They have been where bonds have been dominating, right? The fact that bonds have been underperforming. Now we're seeing the fact that bonds are really, uh, are, and I'll, I'll we'll talk more about this in, in, in forthcoming slides. But the major thing to keep in mind here is that the main things where, uh, most investment portfolios or how people are investing is they're actually losing quite a bit, particularly pension funds, retirement funds, retirement accounts, 401ks, et cetera, are losing against inflation more so. And we're going to see that really come to light where the extend and pretend plausible deniability of the financial advisors and the financial um, industry is no longer going to be able to contain this because of the rising interest courts cost. The rising interest cost with global debt so high, even small increases in interest rates, significantly raise debt service costs for governments and corporations and bonds, and this creates fiscal crisis. On top of that, what's going to be highlighted, uh, especially as we go into the election, is the slowing growth. Debt hampers growth by diverting more money to debt servicing rather than productive investments. So slower growth makes debt burdens harder to service. So it's a catch-22. It's a catch-22. And then we see limited policy options. So the Fed, the central banks, and governments have already used up most of their ammunition fighting the 2008 crisis and the COVID crisis. So their ability to respond to another downturn, should that happen, should that be triggered, is constrained. So look, the eclipse, it's it's crossing over the United States. It's highlighting the global debt levels, limited growth, and this leaves the financial system highly vulnerable to rising rates, inflation, and any external shocks. You can bet your bottom dollar when you look at this right here as we go into eclipse season, we're going to have shock one, shock two, shock three, shock four. Now, while that's happening, keep in mind, because of the Jupiter-Pluto, the level of greed is going to increase. So the deception will be, well, William, the stock market keeps going up. I mean, maybe the rest of the stocks are going down, but, you know, and you would list off the Magnificent Seven, 
they continue to go up regardless, but that's actually sort of a response or a symptom of what normally happens as we, as we see more fundamental degradation occur at the macro level that eventually does catch catch up with the stock market. And we must remember again, it's not the stock market, it's the bond market. And the bond market has to do with debt, right? And right now we see a margin call moment emerging as we get further into the further into the fourth quarter. So an example here, right, would be where um, if you look at the RAGB, which this is a government bond issued by the Republic of Austria, and these bonds are often denominated in euros. Keep that in mind, denominated in euros and are issued to finance the government's activities and manage its debts. So what we're seeing now, right, is happening worldwide. This is very, very clear. And we're talking about Austria, Austrian economics, right? This is a country like you could count on where, you know, they dot their I's and cross their T's. They don't do any crazy stuff. They're not in extend and pretend operational world like America, right, that can continues to you know, not pay its bills, continue to borrow on itself, ex export U.S. dollars, export inflation, let everybody else take the hit, right? We're talking about Austria, Austrian economics. So what we're seeing now play out in Austria is like a canary in the coal mine uh, where we're seeing massive bank vulnerability to rising yields. So the recent 74 basis point drop, this is, a, let me go back here. Sorry about that. That 74 basis point drop Increase, you know, we're seeing a 74 basis point drop increase in 10 year yields, right? We're seeing that has exposed US banks to significant unrealized debt losses. So this really shows here, right? You know, we're seeing massive debt losses estimated to be around 140 billion. And this vulnerability arises from their substantial exposure to the duration of debt security. So, you know, the the anticipated loss for banks are projected to reach a historic high of 700 billion due to the surge in unrealized losses and this situation necessitates or could necessitate an expansion of the federal reserve's bank temporary financial paper the btfp facility originally designed to address temporary bank bailout needs meaning the um um those type of we're going to we're looking at the, the situ, we're looking at a situation where the impact of what's happening on the macro is going to extend beyond the banks and with massive fed and central bank intervention particularly by the fed right just address address just the temporarily bailout banks like regional banks and small banks is going to now has to be um um, has to go beyond just these small banks. So we're looking at a situation where we're seeing, right, $70 trillion of global losses, and we're seeing this extend beyond the banks with rising yields, right, which is not confined to just affecting banks alone. They also have repercussions for the broader fixed income asset class. So traditionally considered safe collateral, in a global repo market, these assets are at risk of depreciation, potentially triggering substantial margin calls that can impact various sectors beyond banking. So market volatility, right? We see that with an example here, again, of the Austrian uh, RAGB uh, government bond illustrating the severity of the situation. It reached a peak price of 139 euro in December 2020, but has plummeted to as low as 32 euro recently, representing a significant loss of 77%. So this is a substantial drop in the bond's price from its peak in December to its recent low highlights the increased volatility in the financial markets in an environment of persistent inflation and economic slowdown combined such volatility can create uncertainty and challenges for both banks and investors so this is going to have broader economic indications because we're seeing major investment loss and these financial challenges become even more concerning in a world characterized by war persistent inflation 
and a slowing economy all converging at the same time. And high inflation erodes the real value of fixed income assets. Keep in mind that the majority of portfolios of people who are 55 and older have most of their assets in fixed income assets, pension funds, retirement accounts, right? Sovereign wealth funds, a majority, all right? And a slowing economy will further amplify these challenges as business and individuals face tighten financial restrictions. And so we're seeing a slowing economy can lead to reduced income and act economic ac activity. At the same time, we have inflation being ex exacerbated by growing geopolitical uncertainty, war, high intensity conflicts, all happening at the same time. So do you understand? You, you got to look at it from this vantage point, because when people say, oh, you know, uh, this stock is really hot. The stock market's going up. There's nothing to worry about. The stock market is the measure of the economy. No, it is not. It is not, right? It's the broader markets. And when we look at the bank balance sheet, the Fed's balance sheet, it continues to contract. So the Fed's balance sheet continued to contract down $46 billion last week to its lowest level since June of 2021. So this, where the Fed is not providing liquidity because they're so concerned about inflation, and yet at the same time, right, they're not, right, they're, they are not stimulating the system. They're not, the, the M2 money supply is beginning to collapse, right? They're looking, right, this is this situation where, we see this happen during Jupiter-Pluto alignments where economic crisis is brewing as the U.S. money supply continues to contract. So this is the troubling scenario unfolding now as inflation increases, as the economy slows down, as we have more geopolitical uncertainty and we have rising um, prices in energy, particularly in oil. We're seeing oil go back up. We're seeing natural gas go back up, right? This correlates these these things coming together trigger financial panics, recessions, and even deeper depressions. So it's a major red flag waving high for the economy and capital markets. So we could see the monetary contraction going on right now. And this all began in earnest. We really saw the contraction really, really take off starting May 2023. So we have the Fed. Uh, doing backstop bailing out of 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 smaller regional banks. We'll get to that in a moment. But at the same time, the overall right money supply, the overall money supply continues to decrease, right? So, and you could see this, right? You know, to deal with the distress, the bank sector is facing significant challenges. Right. We sort of collapse the Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, First Republic Bank, causing ripples of concern throughout the financial world. Now, we've all forgot about that. Right. But it's coming back. We have more problems and money is drying up in the system and inflation is even worse than ever. Right. The U.S. inflation is far worse than what we're being told in this is really concerning when you have a lot of fixed assets. To watch the full quarterly forecast and more, go to WilliamStickEvers.com. Register for the Regulus Financial Astrology Quarterly Forecast today.